Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. I know the background's going to throw you off, but we're going to talk about rain gardens up in Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeye State. So we're in a neighborhood called Beechwald. And this is in Columbus, Ohio. And what we're looking at is what the city calls a rain garden. So what is a rain garden? A rain garden is actually a detention pond. And it drains extremely fast. This water collected here off the curb goes down to the river, to the reservoir. So this is one of the ravines that those rain gardens empty into. And you can see the Old Intangy River. As we look closer, you can see the Old Intangy over there. And what they're trying to do is to filter this water. It gets filtered quite a bit. You can see all this rock. As it comes down the ravine, it's bringing all of that debris with it and coming all the way out and emptying into the river. Let's take a look at how the rain garden actually works. These gardens are about five feet deep. They are made of layers of sand and gravel which allow the runoff from the street and the yard to pass through and filter out the contaminants. You'll notice on the inlet of the garden there is cobblestone or cement. This slows down the flow of water as it enters the garden. These rain gardens are much different than what you find in a new development. The storm system here is roughly a hundred years old and is in dire need of replacing. The engineers designed the system to greatly reduce the amount of runoff entering the storm drain. The detention pond, or rain garden, helps filter out the contaminants and hold water long enough for the system to keep up. In other words, during a big rain event, the people downstream are flooded out. From this rain garden to the stream I showed you down below at the bottom of the hill is about two miles and the cost to replace this with larger drain is astronomical. So when I first saw these, my first thought was, hey, cars are gonna end up driving right into these things because they stick out. You see how they stick out into the street? So maybe that's already happened here because they've already got those bumper things out there to warn the cars. But you can see how much storm there is here. There's storm drains here actually at the bottom of someone's driveway. Again, curb holes bringing that roof water and downspout out here to the street where it belongs. But again, these things are they are everywhere here in this neighborhood. There's another one on up across the street. You see that one? These are the rain gardens. And they, they must work really good. I, I like the idea. I don't like how they stick out into the road because, I, like I said, that was my first thought is, what is that? That's somebody's going to run over that. And I thought it was construction, but these are permanent. And they've got, you know, decorative plants that grow in here during the summertime. Really cool idea. And you can see that sump pump kick on right here. See that water coming out? All of these homes have basements and there's a pump in every single one of these homes and all of that sump pump water comes out here to the street. That's where it's supposed to go. So here on this street, you know, we've got some more of these uh, rain gardens is what they're calling them, rain gardens. And this whole street, if you look down, they're all recessed. They're all back up on these people's property, although that is actually technically the city's property. Inside the rain garden, we find an overflow. So as water does, you know, come so hard that it fills up these beds, it will drop directly down into the storm. Can you see that pipe down below? I know it's hard to focus on that, but we'll get it. See it? So that runs directly into the storm, which runs all the way down to the river. You'll also notice that white piece of pipe there. That's an automatic gate valve allowing that to open and close as water level rises and falls. If you think about sheet water, you know, the runoff, anywhere that you have a paved surface, you've got sheet water, which runs off. 
all of those oils and chemicals, they need to be filtered somehow before they reach our rivers, streams, and reservoirs. If you followed a lot of our videos, you've probably heard me say that you can't beat Mother Nature. And so when this definitely, you know, during big flood events, this is going to overflow. That water comes down through this grate, down into this pipe, and there's an automatic check valve. As that water level rises and falls, that check valve opens and closes and allows more water to drop directly into the storm system. So here at the collection point of these rain gardens, the system's working really well. It's picking up all of that storm water, the sheet water runoff, and it's actually filtering it quite well. Let's go down to the river and take a look at what happens down there. So down here at the bottom of the hill, this is the ravine where those rain gardens empty. They all drain down through here into the Old and Tansy River. I know it's hard to see that, but there's the Old and Tansy River. This ravine is total shale. If you don't know what shale is, I'll show you that in just a second. But that water has been filtered so cleanly. It is just great to see this amazing feat of what we can do with storm water. So if you don't know what shale is, take a look. Can you see this? This is just from erosion and it's just paper thin. In fact, it's almost like a knife. You could cut somebody with this stuff. But look how thin it is. And over the centuries, as water came down this ravine, it just ate away and ate away. And you can see the layers of it. So we need a geologist here. <laughs> Talk to us about why these round stones are here and what caused them. Why are they round? And why is there a hole in the center? Because they're really cool looking. Down here at the river, you can see that it rained recently, so the river level's ra rather high. And if you look closely, this river is moving probably 10 knots. It's moving quite fast as it runs through there. Let's look up the ravine. We're underneath of the little bridge here, but if you look up that ravine, you can see all of that water that I showed you, those rain gardens, they all empty out. And there's probably maybe 30 or 40 of these ravines that come down from that neighborhood. And they all empty into, they all empty into the Old Tangi. So we're actually standing on a road bridge. Can you see we're on the bridge and you saw the water over there, but look over here. See that? dry and they brought all that water down that giant storm drain. The water from those rain gardens and the storm drains is all underground and you can see this is where it actually empties and begins to flow into the ravines. A lot of water coming through there and that's just groundwater. So you could call it a French drain. It's not raining anywhere but it's still picking up the groundwater. Let's see if we can get down closer to some of this and take a look. So there's the bridge that we were just standing on and we already showed you where this empties out. It empties out into the Old Intangi where we were down there talking about the shale. Let's see if we can get down in here and take a look. Okay, so we're down under the road bridge. As you can see, you can see the drainage holes keeping this bridge intact so that as groundwater rises up, it comes out of those pipes, the terracotta pipes comes down into this little trench. And if we look carefully over here, let's take a look down in the storm drain. And it's really dark. So this is a 48 inch drain. And you can see the kids have come in here and put their graffiti on there. They probably go way back, but we're not going back there. And you can see the movement of earth where it's been tuck pointed over the years. The stone, you can see the groundwater that's still coming out of the ground and the separation. That's why they've concreted all of this. These are places that I used to play when I was little. And there's hundreds of these uh, big, great big storm drainage 
areas that are on this ravine. Just a beautiful little spot. Here at the top of the bridge, if you notice to the right, a huge park created from going green, allowing us to catch that water further upstream and discharge it safely into the ravine. And this is the beginning of the water going into the ravine. So from way up there at those rain gardens, you can see this ravine. And it is beautiful, especially in the summertime. We're looking at it, you know, in the, what is this, March, and it's winter time. And you can see how it comes down, flows across all the shale. Our storm systems are failing across the country. And to replace the storm system, for example, just this one, to do it one spot, one street, and bring that new storm down here to the river, we're probably looking at close to maybe six, seven hundred thousand dollars. Here in Columbus, they were able to not only, you know, refurbish that system, but add the filtration system that is so needed to help protect our rivers, reservoirs, and they did a great job. The rain gardens up there at the top of the streets, they collect all the oil and chemicals that come off of the road. The engineers of this project did a great job. They were able to add those rain garden directly into this existing storm drain. And the result is just, wow, look how clean this water is. Other than the few rain gardens that kind of jetted out into the road, I think that's because that's where the storm was and they really were trying to save a lot of money and work with their existing systems. And here's the result of those retention ponds, the rain gardens. It filtered that water. Look how clean this water is. It is beautiful. With so many storm systems failing across the country, this is the way to go. You know, years ago when I was here in Columbus, Ohio, we would work on houses like this. And you could actually see someone has put the downspout drain. Can you see it right there? And let it come down further into the ravine because it would erode the bank and cause that house to fall over, a very slow process. But we used to work on these houses and we would bring that pipe as far as we could down the ravine until we got it into the actual water. And wow, <laughs> hard job because it's all shale. As you get underneath of this dirt, it's just solid shale all the way through. So on this hill, you can see it's pretty severe. It comes down and you can see what people try to do to you know, stop this water. And they've got a small, tiny, they'll, we'll call it a culvert pipe, but it's not a culvert pipe. That is four inch uh, steel that goes underneath of there. And then they put it into PVC, thin wall PVC, but look how packed up it is. It needs to be cleaned. Maintenance, it is so important. This line comes down, they've got it going in front of this apron back into the old cast iron pipe and continues on down the road. Storm water and the power of that water is tremendous. Even from the downspouts where they come off of the houses and come out here to the street, the erosion, can you see that right there alongside the curb? It just floods down through here so fast, ending up into the ravine. Remember up there at the top where the rain gardens were, catching that water and filtering it before it comes down and ends up into the stream. I think you'll see more and more cities and counties that will actually implement these rain gardens these into their infrastructure throughout their cities and their playgrounds. I think it's a really great idea to help keep our rivers and reservoirs clean. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.